approach the end of our time together, it's time to hear some journeys that will hopefully leave you feeling energised and motivated. It's my pleasure to firstly introduce Nikki Hind. Nikki is the founder of Blind Grit poss and, and possibly Australia's first legally blind fashion designer. She's a past student of both Wodonga TAFE and TAFE Queensland and says that TAFE gave her the skills to pursue her childhood dream, fashion design. Please welcome Nikki. Thank you, Lee. Hi everybody, my name is Nikki Hind, as Lee said, and I am apparently Australia's first legally blind fashion designer. Now, before I begin, I'd like you all to know that today is not just a speaking engagement for me. About 18 months ago, I was asked, how would I know when I had made it as a fashion designer? And without hesitation, I responded, when I'm interviewed by Lee Sales. <laughs> so it's very nice to be here today. Now, I know I'm here to share my journey with you, and I shall. However, firstly, I'd like to highlight that although my personal experience is, of course, unique and special to me, my story is neither uni unique or particularly special. Now, I certainly don't point this out to minimise my story. Quite the opposite. I'm very proud of what I've achieved and how I've achieved it. I just want to point out that those who live with disability and survive trauma need a serious rebranding. They possess some of the qualities we most admire, value and aspire to, qualities that CEOs and elite athletes would bottle if they could. Yet, there's almost a complete void of them in decision-making roles. We're here to talk about how to ensure people are not left behind as we move forward. I see TAFEs and Polytechnics as being really well placed to harness the unique and valuable potential of the, this huge segment of society because, um, because of their strong links with industry, largely. And there's an incredibly simple way to do it. And see if you can guess what that is before I finish today. And now that you've all completely lost interest in my journey, let me tell you all about it. Um, I was 34 and about to become a mother for the very first time when a stroke left me permanently legally blind. Uh, so the legal blindness really just had to fit in around this gorgeous new baby and motherhood. So it wasn't until um, about a decade later that I had the time and space to seriously think through how my legal blindness would affect my work and how I express my potential in the world. By this stage, however, a series of traumatic events had left me financially ruined, isolated, and struggling with the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. I felt like I was trying to operate and be a mum under a heavy, dark, wet blanket, and my confidence was, was just crushed. I was determined not to be broken, not to remain crushed. There was no way I wanted my boys to be raised by a distressed, anxious, unconfident, unjoyous mother. That wasn't who I was, and they deserved the very best of their mum. Instinctively, I reached for an aspiration, a dream, something that would break through the oppressive weight of the trauma and reconnect me to the things that made me feel joyful, creative, energised, confident. For me, that was fashion design. It had always been the happy, creative place I escaped to when I daydreamed. Of course, a dream remains just that, a dream, unless you take action. So what was the very first baby step I took towards pursuing my dream? I enrolled in fashion design at TAFE. I didn't want a qualification. A qualification was meaningless to me. I wanted to gain the skills required to turn all these designs in my head into actual garments. I chose only the units I needed to enable me to get my designs out of my head and into reality. I did gain the skills thanks to the brilliant staff and facilities at the beautiful Sunshine Coast TAFE in South East Queensland. I'm a ridiculous perfectionist and details person. Happily, the remaining vision I have is excellent detail vision, so I still get to obsess over every tiny detail. I was in perfection heaven with the quality of skills being taught. Any perfectionist out there in the audience will know that blissful buzz you get 
that you experience when your perfectionist standards are being met. I couldn't get enough. I loved everything about the course. It delivered exactly what I wanted. In January 2015, I set myself the challenge of creating my first fashion collection, ready to in enter into the Prix de Mary Claire Awards in November of that year. I had my designs photographed on my website in an electronic lookbook and sent into Marie Claire by the 7th of November that year. Amusingly, the PR manager of Marie Claire called me upon receipt of my entry to very politely say that the fashion component of the Prix de Marie Claire Awards is only on every second year, and 2015 wasn't a year it was on. <laughs> I know, <laughs> very sad. However, she didn't bin it, and I used to be in PR, so, you know, I would, in her position, I would have said thank you so much and please send it in again next year. She didn't bin it, she actually sent it through to both the, um, the fashion editor and the chief editor. So, encouraged by what I saw as a tiny vote of confidence from an industry giant, I decided that this was worthy of my absolute best shot. I saw a fabulous opportunity to bring as many others along with me as I could, others in need of reconnecting with their dreams, and the idea of Blind Grit was born. Blind Grit is inspirational athleisure wear created by those who conquer challenges for those who are ready for one. It's a celebration of those superhumans who have been forced to survive outside a comfort zone that most of us take for granted. All the fun, creative, aspirational job roles integral to the creation of a fashion brand will be fulfilled by people who live with disability and survive trauma. The modelling, photography, social media, graphic design, public relations, marketing, hair, makeup artistry, music, video creation, web design, the fashion industry is full of dream jobs. The idea is that the entire brand will be built of and around people who live with disability and survive trauma. Every garment will be infused with challenge conquering energy. So when you slip into our gear, you get to borrow that energy to help you push out of your own comfort zone. Earlier this year, I won both an ING Dream Starter Scholarship for social business and a scholarship with the new Disability Leader Leadership Institute in Australia. Um, I was also invited in September this year to show my designs on the runway at Melbourne Fashion Week and speak on a panel exploring the genuine inclusiveness of disability within the fashion industry. The event was then mentioned in the New York Times last week. So I'm undeniably proud and excited about the future. I know I only have a short time to speak today, so I'll wrap up by saying as part of my journey as a legally blind fashion designer and social entrepreneur, I was recently told by one of Australia's most respected social business leaders, you can't do this. And they won't be able to do it, they're trauma survivors. Don't subconsciously be that person, because throughout history, disability and trauma have produced innate experts in creating resilience, being adaptive, problem solving, innovative thinking, and meaningful, inclusive living tempered by a deep connection with the human experience. It will be an incredibly powerful combination to bring that kind of decision making into a future full of the almost overwhelming possibilities and challenges of increasing automation and technology. My message for today couldn't be more simple. Take the risk and place us in decision making roles. That could just be your industry's value add for the future. And in case any of you out there are interested, I would love to collaborate with TAFE as a legally blind fashion designer and founder of Blind Grit. So please do come and speak with me later. <laughs>